From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Tuesday, November 17th. I'm Wayne Pratt. The U.S. Census Bureau will begin to publish information from the 2020 national headcount in the coming months. It will have a lasting effect on our region and surrounding states. I think for Missouri, the long-term impacts are probably not 2030, but 2040. If we don't really understand our population is not growing as fast, we may not feel this urgency to go out and try to make Missouri a more inclusive state for people to move here. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt speaks with a local demographer about what we can expect from the 2020 census information ahead of its release. Tighter restrictions to slow the spread of coronavirus are now in effect in St. Louis County. They include a ban on indoor dining at restaurants. Curbside service and outdoor dining are still allowed. The county's mandate is prompting the Missouri Restaurant Association to join an anticipated lawsuit against the regulations. Association Chief Executive Bob Bonney says the temporary order will, quote, likely result in the permanent closure of many restaurants across the county. These restrictions also reduce occupancy rates for businesses from 50 percent to 25 percent. All gatherings are limited to 10 people. They had been capped at 49. The move comes as the county reports 1,000 new coronavirus cases in a day for the first time. St. Louis County is asking residents who test positive to do their own contact tracing. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton reports. St. Louis County contact tracers have for months called up people who have tested positive and asked who they could have infected. Then they called those people too. They encourage people to isolate themselves before they can spread the disease to others. Public health workers are overwhelmed. Page says patients should contact people who they may have infected. This means it's up to you to let those who you've been in contact with know when you test positive for COVID-19 so that they can quarantine and they can get tested. The county defines a contact as someone an infected person was within six feet of for 15 minutes or more. Page says county officials are still hiring more contact tracers. I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. Several St. Louis area school districts are returning to distance learning as coronavirus cases surge and Thanksgiving gatherings loom. St. Louis Public Schools, Edwardsville, and Jefferson districts are switching back to virtual instruction for at least a week around the holiday. Riverview Gardens is closing its buildings indefinitely after being open for just two weeks. Melville and Wentzville districts have closed their high schools until after Christmas. UMSL has announced most of its instruction will go online after Thanksgiving break. The Missouri Senate is delaying its special session until after Thanksgiving due to positive coronavirus cases among members and staff. The session was called to ensure the state could receive additional federal coronavirus relief funding, which must be used by the end of the year. Minority leader John Rizzo from Independence says lawmakers should still be able to spend that money by the deadline. Everybody universally agrees that we need to get that money appropriated so that it can be used in the community and what it's for and for PPE and doing different things to show up people that, that have been adversely affected by the virus. Senate Majority Leader Caleb Roden from Columbia posted a statement on Twitter saying the decision was disruptive, but in the best interest of lawmakers, staff, and the public. A newly elected lawmaker from St. Charles County is supporting a bid to shield business owners from lawsuits related to COVID-19. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum has more from State Representative-elect Adam Schwadron's appearance on our Politically Speaking podcast. Governor Mike Parson expanded a special session to include liability protection to businesses and healthcare workers against COVID-19 related lawsuits. Schwadron, a St. Charles County Republican, owns a carpet cleaning business. He says there's merit to COVID-19 liability protection. If someone finds out that they did get COVID and they were just at a location where someone else was just announced that they were positive, they may say, well, you gave it to me. Uh, But can you really... 100% trace it back to that as the source. Lawmakers are expected to debate bills curbing COVID-19 related lawsuits in the coming days. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. The U.S. Census Bureau stopped collecting survey responses more than a month ago. We'll start to see that information soon. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt spoke with Ness Sandoval about what to expect from the census results ahead of their release. Sandoval studies demography and inequality in American cities at St. Louis University. 
Schmidt started the conversation by asking him what the consequences of an undercount in the census might be. If you don't have an accurate census, then some communities will lose power politically and some communities may be overrepresented. And I think there's also a social consequence of not truly understanding how fast these demographic transitions are happening. And so when it, you get a good accurate 2030 census, you may think, why did the state of Missouri change so fast? Well, it was changing. We just didn't capture the, the magnitude of change in 2020. I think for Missouri, the long-term impacts are probably not 2030, but 2040. If we don't really understand our population is not growing as fast, we may not feel this urgency to go out and try to make Missouri a more inclusive state for people to move here. If we look at the 2030 census and we're like, oh, we need to, we need to encourage population growth, it may be too late. We could be up in 2040 to lose another uh, house seat. As it relates to the St. Louis region, you know, including the Metro East, too, in that, is there anything that you'll be looking for when these numbers are released? Any trends or, or specifics that you're curious about? So we're going to, I think the one trend I'm going to look at is what's happening to the African-American population for the region. So what we started to detect in the American Community Survey was an out-migration of, of African-American residents. We see it for the city. Part of it could be an undercount, but I think we have some pretty good models that will tell us how much of an undercount is missing and how many African-Americans have decided to leave the region. I think the second trend has to do with the city of St. Louis. It's the largest city in the region. And it's kind of, there's a paradox in the city. The city's losing people, it's losing families, but at the same time, there's a tremendous amount of economic investment happening in the city. You're seeing very young residents move into the city, people who have lots of money moving into the city. And we're starting to see those who are at the margins economically or, or feel that their neighborhoods are collapsing. We're seeing this, this paradox of, poor people leaving or can't afford to live in the city anymore, and young, rich people moving into the city. Is there anything that you can immediately draw from some of the self-response rate maps of our region that show different communities having higher or lower numbers or percentages that they self-responded to the census? So if we look at the map of St. Louis uh, City and even the Metro East, we'll see that there's a very large cluster of census tracts that have the lowest response rates for the region. So if I was to overlay that with the map of social vulnerability index, it would almost be a perfect correlation. Well, I'm wondering like how much the lower response rates in, in the certain parts of our region correlate to the online emphasis that the census placed on, on responses. Yeah, I think there's an absolute correlation. Yeah, absolutely. St. Charles has the highest in the state, right? They have the highest response rate in the state. You kind of say, assume that everything that we see in St. Charles can be applied to North St. Louis. If you, if you understand those two areas, they're completely different. And, and I don't think it's just unique to St. Louis. I think it's, so we see this in a lot of large cities. We're going to see these hot spots of neighborhoods that get undercounted. And we know that this is not random throughout a metropolitan region. It, they're statistically clustered in parts of the city that have historical patterns of discrimination. This is not a surprise to me. These neighborhoods are dealing with so much right now. I think the last thing on their mind is actually trying to complete a census. What possible limitations do you see in, in this data set bef before it's even released? And that's a hard question for me to a answer, but there'll be these certain types of information that will not be available to us because of privacy, because of confidentiality concerns. And so in the past, we were able to get very detailed information at the block level. It's still not clear to me, based on the new policies that have been developed by the census, how much data is going to be available beyond just data that's going to be uh, necessary for redistricting. The census is one, it's a very important data set, but it's not the only data set we can rely on. And so we have to be smart consumers and making sure that we integrate all these other data sets that are out there to help fill in the picture that may not be complete because of, the, of some of the gaps in this 2020 census. That's demographer Ness Sandoval speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.